Hi, Justine. Good seeing you again. How's your summer? Pretty good, I must say. Was able to visit my family's farm in the province. How about you? My summer was pretty exciting too. Nature tripping, far from the frenzy of city life. I even have a remembrance of it. Even if we live in a world full of highly sophisticated technology, it's always good to go back to the basics. Are you honestly telling me that you didn't even miss cable TV, the internet, or even your cell phone? Sure I did! But, but I must say, I missed it too. And the gang, of course! <laughs> now, I can't wait to go back to school. Plus, I'm meeting up with the gang at this new place. Come, join us! Welcome to K-Hub! This is a place where we can all meet up and learn things outside of the classroom. It's a more relaxed and hip new environment. So, is everyone cool with that? Super cool! Especially now that we're taking up biology. You see, I've been doing some advanced reading and I'm really very interested about the characteristics of living things. Me too! After spending time at my family's farm in the province, I've just become so curious on what all of us living creatures share. Well, we're surely going to find that out. We also have something very interesting for everyone. So, this is the K-Hub webpage. It's Knowledge Channel's newest edutainment website. It uses various media to help explain complex concepts, terminologies, and mechanisms, including photographs, diagrams, videos, and animations, and articles. Cool! Can we sign up? Of course! Everybody's welcome at KHUB. Here, I'll show you how it's used. I'll just log in and browse my contacts. Since we wanted to know about microorganisms, I look for someone who's an expert in the field of science. They even have a planet named after her. She's Dr. Josette Bio, an expert teacher who will help us in everything we need and want to know about biology. She is indeed world-class because she is the first Asian to win the 2002 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. She holds a PhD in biology from the De La Salle University and she is the director of the Philippine Science High School of Western Desires. I've read about her and this is exciting news. Welcome to the opening of the school year. I'm sure you're all excited to go back to school, right? Yes, ma'am. We're all excited to go back to school. I look forward to learning about our new subject, which is biology. Biology is indeed an exciting subject. Biology comes from the Greek words bios, meaning life, and logos, meaning to study. Biology, therefore, is the study about life and the study about living things. What do you want to learn from this subject? I want to learn how the variety of living things on Earth came about. I also want to learn how these organisms, such as bacteria, fungi, plants and animals are alike, and how they differ. Mm, well, I've got some questions in mind. Questions such as, what enables an organism to survive in its environment? Why would an organism choose to live in a particular environment? For example, what enables a fish to live in water and a bird to live among the trees? I hope that some of these questions can be answered in our biology class. You will learn a lot of things in biology. Biology is not just memorization of concepts and facts as many students think. We will make our biology lessons interesting and fun. We will use the natural environment as our laboratory. Wow, that seems very exciting. Does that mean that we'll have field trips? We can hold our classes in the school ground, in the garden, or if time would allow, we can have field trips. Today, our first lesson in biology is on characteristics of living things. Can you point to me a living thing and tell me what it is doing? Look, I see a butterfly creeping from flower to flower. Hmm, I see a spider spinning its web. Look, 
there are friendly horses in the campus. I know that by looking at something, you will know whether it is alive or not. But defining life is difficult, partly because living things are so diverse and their characteristics differ. Also, some non-living things may appear lifelike. However, we can describe some characteristics of living things that, taken together, make them different from non-living things. Today, we will have an activity. Pretend that you're a team of scientists whose mission is to find answers to the question, what characteristics distinguish living organisms from non-living organisms? The school ground is your laboratory. Discuss among yourselves why you would consider an object a living organism and what signs of life does it show? I will start with my first observation. Living things can move. Look at these horses. They can walk and run. Wait, but how about plants? Do they move too? Look at those mahogany trees. They are stationary. But the branches of mahogany trees grow upward and their roots move downward. Let's go to the garden and I will point out more examples of how plants show movement. Look at these yellow bells. They are vines and they move by creeping, climbing, and extending parts of their stems. Look at their flowers. They are all faced towards the sun. Let's take a look at this makahiya plant. Let's touch its leaves and observe what happens. The leaves close when you touch them. I agree with you, Alfonso. This plant moves by closing when you touch it. How about animals which are fixed in one position like sponges, oysters, and corals? Do they move? Well, these organisms have body parts which bring food and other nutrients to their bodies. Corals, for example, have tentacles which bring the food to their mouths. Okay, okay, you have convinced me that all living things can move. Come on, let's look for other signs of life. Look at these fishes. They are eating. All living things eat. I have fishes at home and I feed them every day. Hi. How about plants? They don't eat, do they? Plants don't eat. That's because they can make their own food through a process known as photosynthesis. Other animals or organisms that cannot make their own food, such as the fish, obtain nutrients by feeding on other organisms or substances. I agree with you, Alfonso. Living things acquire energy from food and other materials in the environment. The fishes eat food pellets that were given to them, and the horses eat the grass. They use the energy to move, work, reproduce, and grow. Your observations are correct. Organisms acquire nutrients from the environment and incorporate this in their own bodies. Animals like fishes and horses can eat, while those with chlorophyll, like this coconut plant, can manufacture their own food. All living things undergo metabolic processes in their bodies. Metabolism is the sum total of all the chemical processes that takes place within the cell that provides for the organism's growth, maintenance, and repair. In the case of the fish, when it eats the food pellets, food is digested in its stomach and the nutrients are absorbed by the intestines which are then circulated in its cells. The nutrients reaching the cells are used to provide energy to produce more cells resulting to the growth of the fish. The entire process is called metabolism. Thank you, Dr. Beale. That's very interesting. So guys, I think the third characteristic of living things is that all living things are capable of growth. Come on, let's look for other evidences to support the statement. Look at baby Einstein. He is still small, but in time, he will grow as big as his mom, Madame Curie. Let's take a look at this coconut plant. This plant came from a seed which became a seedling. After the seedling got nutrients and water from the soil, it grew bigger and developed into this mature coconut plant. Wait, 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 wait. Look at these stones. They are small and big stones. Stones also grow big. Does this mean that stones are alive? No, Enzo. Stones are lifeless objects. They may grow in size, but that doesn't mean that their growth is the result of eating and digestion. Actually, it's correct, Lorenzo. All living organisms are capable of growth. Growth in living organisms is defined as increase in the amount of living substance in the body due to the absorption and accumulation of food substances. This growth is a result of the metabolic processes in the organism's body. Stones may increase in size, 
but this increase in size is not due to metabolism. This can be due to the accumulation of sediments or other physical processes. Let's look back again at the horses. They have four legs, a nose, a tail, a mouth. They look different from the coconut plant or a fish. In other words, all living organisms have their own characteristic appearance that distinguishes it from other organisms. You're right, Alfonso. Not only that, the bodies of all living things are highly organized. The cells are organized into tissues, tissues into organs, and organs into organ systems. If I may just add to what you have just said, the organization of living things, in fact, goes beyond the individual organism. A group of very similar organisms, which can potentially reproduce among themselves, constitutes a species. Members of the same species that live in a given area are considered a population. Populations of several species living and interacting in the same area form a community. A community plus its non-living environment, including land, water, and atmosphere, constitutes an ecosystem. Finally, the entire surface region of the Earth inhabited by living things is called the biosphere. Wow, I'm amazed, Dr. Dio. It amazes me to think that even if organisms are so varied, they are also highly organized in nature. Let's go look for other signs of life. Yes, an earthworm. Observe what happens when it touches with a stick. It wiggles. That's responding to stimulus to protect yourself from getting burned. Irritability is the ability of an organism to react or respond to stimulus. But can you cite some examples of how plants respond to stimuli? I saw my plants in my windowsill growing towards the light. Plants respond to light. Observe the roots of the plants. They all grow downward. That's responding positively to gravity. The closing of the Makahaya plants is the plant's reaction to touch. The climbing of the yellow bells is also the plant's reaction when it gets contact with the solid objects. The closing and opening of the flowers, their reactions to changes in temperature. So these are examples of how plants respond to stimuli. I want to present another characteristic of living things. Living things can reproduce. Birds lay eggs, plants produce seeds which will grow into new plants, and the horse, Madame Curie, gave birth to baby Einstein. Yes, living organisms can reproduce. Some organisms reproduce sexually by the union of the egg cell and the sperm cell. Some organisms undergo a sexual reproduction. This may be in the form of spore formation in fungi, budding in sponges, or fragmentation in corals. Reproduction ensures the perpetuation of species. If living things cease to reproduce, they will eventually become extinct. Earlier today, Lorenzo has a question. What enables an organism to survive in a particular environment? For example, what would make a fish live in water and a bird to live among the trees? Who can answer this question? Yes, Ashley? Fishes can live in water because they have gills. They also have fins for swimming. Birds can live among the trees because they have lungs for breathing and wings which enable them to fly. Ma'am, these horses can live on land because they have four strong legs which enable them to walk and run in search for food. Yes, living things can adapt to their environment. Adaptation enables an organism to survive in this changing world. Adaptation can be both structural or behavioral. In structural adaptation, an organism has certain body parts that allow it to be suited to its environment. Examples are the gills in fishes, which allow the fish to breathe in water, and the wings in birds, which allow them to fly in search for food and shelter. In behavioral adaptation, an organism adapts by adjusting its behavior pattern to the changing conditions of the environment. Polar bears hibernate during winter. Some plants shed their leaves during summer, to prevent excessive water loss. When conditions are favorable, these organisms go back to their normal activities. Now, can you summarize the characteristics of living things which you have just discussed? We have identified the following characteristics of living things which make them different from non-living things. First, living things can move. 
Second, living things undergo metabolic processes in their body. Third, living things are capable of growth. Fourth, living things have their own specific organization. And fifth, living things can respond to stimuli. Sixth, living things can reproduce. And seventh, living things can adapt to their environment. I am very happy of your accomplishments today. You acted like real scientists. You observed, you asked questions, you listened to each other's opinions, and you analyzed situations. These are some of the qualities that scientists possess. These are also the attitudes which you should develop as learners. I wish that as you learn more about living organisms, you will develop a deep appreciation of the beauty of life on Earth. Bye! Bye! So, how do you feel about today's session? You know, Miss Abby, I never thought I could learn this much after just one sitting. I feel that we appreciate the study of biology more. They have this really a fun way of learning. Is that right? But, to make sure that you really learn from Dr. Bio, let me ask you. What characteristics of living things, like you and me, make them different from non-living things, like Louis Rock over here? Uh, 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 we'll find out after you guys get some snacks. It's recess time! Yeah! Hey guys, recess, 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 recess! So, before we went on a break, I asked you what differentiates living things from non-living things based from Dr. Bio's lecture. The difference between me and my pet rock is that I can move. If I put my rock down on this table, it's definitely not going to move on its own. Another, I undergo metabolic processes in my body, so I can gain weight and lose weight too. My pet rock will always stay the same. And finally, I can grow. My pet rock will not go any taller or bigger. Very good, Yuri. You really learned the lesson and its practical applications. Thank you, Miss Abby. Being in Kea makes us want to learn more about biology. It's such an interesting subject, and I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. Yes, plenty more to learn. And remember, whatever you want to be, whether a scientist or someone else, you will surely be the best that you can be if you will put your mind and heart into it. And just like in anything, research is the key to learning. Many scientific and technological advancements have been brought about by someone who was willing to learn and do research. That has made a huge impact to the society and the environment. You can make your own mark. In the meantime, that has been a great beginning for a new school year. You said it, Miss Abby. Chaos totally rocks! <laughs>